Hello everyone, my name is Noah, and today we're going to be talking once again about mushrooms. But since the holidays are rolling around, I am going to be talking specifically about Santa Claus and mushrooms. And I'll get back to that in a second. But the reason that I made this video is because a few weeks ago I actually came across a mushroom that has eluded me for many, many years. It is a mushroom that is surrounded in many legends, myths, and pop culture. The specific mushroom that I found was Amanita muscaria variation gesui, but you probably know it better for its red counterpart, the Amanita muscaria. Now this mushroom can be found in Alice in Wonderland, Mario, Fantasia, and is even the choice for the emoji mushroom. This mushroom can be seen all across pop culture and history. But today, for the holidays, we will be specifically taking a look at its influence on modern day Santa Claus. So if you're in for a trip, please come down the rabbit hole with me and let's figure out exactly why modern day Santa Claus is based on a hallucinogenic mushroom. If you're looking for some really fun, obscure facts to drop on your family during this Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas, you are definitely watching the right video. As always, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, jingle all my bells and buttons, and let's get into it. So as we're traditionally taught, Santa Claus was based on old Saint Nick, who was born around 280 AD. Now, he became a monk in Myra, which is in current day Turkey. So old Saint Nick is best known for giving away all of his inherited wealth and traveling the country helping the poor and sick. Now traditionally, on December 6th, the day of his death, it is celebrated and it is said that it is a lucky day to buy expensive gifts and to get married. But I ask you, why does Santa Claus live in the North Pole? Why does he wear red and white? Why does he have reindeer and little elf helpers? Why does he sneak down the chimney at night and leave presents underneath the conifer tree? Why do little kids leave milk and cookies out for him that night? And why does his leading reindeer, Rudolph, have a red nose? Why does any of this make any sense? Well, it makes a little sense when you introduce a little magic. Mushrooms. Court is now in session. Today's case is Amanita Muscaria versus Santa Claus on issues of identity fraud. Prosecution, are you ready to make your opening statements? Thank you, Your Honor. Sir, sitting across from me today in the courtroom is a complete fraud. Santa Claus has spent too much time in the limelight and he's been casting a shadow on his true identity. In fact, Santa Claus is actually based on a Siberian monk that used to trip balls on my clients, even as to go as so far as to piss in his followers' mouths to increase the hallucinogenic effects. Now, what started off as an innocent child story about reindeer, elves, and presents has become an incredibly misunderstood and misrepresented story of the true identity of Santa Claus. This is, irrefutably, the world's biggest cover-up of identity fraud that we've ever seen, and I am here to put an end to it today. Thank you, Your Honor. Defense, you may now make your opening statements. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant has actually asked to make the opening remarks himself. Ho, ho, ho. Not guilty. Your Honor, would you just take a look at these two? Do you see any similarities, maybe a likeness in color? Where do you think that Santa Claus might have gotten his famous red and white from? Now, as Santa Claus will claim, it came from a very successful Coca-Cola marketing campaign back in 1933, but that just isn't the case now, is it, Santa Claus? Objection, Your Honor. The prosecution is leading my defendant. Objection overruled. Please continue. Your Honor, what exactly is it that people bring into their homes on Christmas? Christmas trees, exactly. Adorned in red and white presents sitting underneath. Well, did you know that my red and white mycorrhizal client right here almost exclusively grows underneath conifer trees? Did you know that this tradition of bringing a tree into the home actually originated by followers of Siberian shamans that would bring a tree into their home and wait on the winter solstice for their shamans to bring these special psychedelic mushrooms into their home? And even sometimes if the snow was too deep, the shamans would have to slip in through the chimney. This is merely a coincidence, Your Honor. 
The prosecution couldn't possibly explain Santa's use of reindeer and children bringing out cookies on Christmas Eve. In fact, we can explain that. Your Honor, in Siberia, the reindeer there are famously known for consuming these psychedelic mushrooms to escape the monotony of winter. And anyone who's consumed my client right here fully well knows that they experience the feeling of flying while doing so. And even the shamans that used to take this in Siberia used to proclaim that they were visited by flying reindeer while tripping on my client. That still doesn't explain the milk and cookies. Amanita muscaria used to actually be used as a natural pesticide. People would mix it up with milk and then put it inside of their homes during those late cold nights to kill off any of the flies that were living in their homes. The flies would come over, drink a bit of the milk, become intoxicated by my client, and fall into the milk and drown. Now that's how we explain the milk and cookies. Even if this is somehow evidence to the case, I ask the prosecution to please explain the use of elves and Rudolph in Santa Claus's folklore. As discussed before, Your Honor, reindeer are very interested in this bright red psychedelic mushroom. And what might it look like to someone observing a reindeer eating one of these red mushrooms? Why, it might look like they had a red nose. And as for the elves, sir, I challenge you to take some of these mushrooms and tell me with a straight face that you didn't see elves. I rest my case. Well, I've heard enough. In case Amanita Muscaria versus Santa Claus, I find Santa guilty of all charges involving identity fraud. And I sentence him to buy a shirt from my new Etsy. I just designed three new logos, one involving an Amanita Muscaria, one a Morel, and one an Old Man of the Woods. They're only $22.99, and it's a great way to support me and my channel. Court is adjourned. I don't even know what that video was. <laughs> um, thank you all for watching that video. Um, like I said, I have a new Etsy shop. It's in the links in the description down below. Um, I've got three new t-shirt designs out. Um, I spent a lot of time designing these shirts, and I personally really like them, and I hope you do too. They're only $22.99. If you'd like to support this channel, that would be a great way of doing so. If you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button because we got a lot of new content on the way. Um, I appreciate you all, and I'll see you soon. Bye.